This is the Power of Osmosis Podcast, powered by the Vidwheel Creator Network. Hi, everyone. This is another episode of the Power of Osmosis video podcast. I am John Osberg, and today I'm joined by a great friend, um, someone that, uh, that that I've collaborated with quite a bit and someone that uh, is, is very familiar to those that are involved in our communities um, and entrepreneurship with, uh, you know, universities and colleges. And that is Hadar Borden. And I'm going to look over at my screen because Hadar is the director of Blackstone Launchpad and Techstars, in addition to the West New York Prosperity Fellowship Program at the University of Buffalo. So now that I've got that out of the way, um, Hadar, welcome to the show. Thanks so much, John. This is a great opportunity and sorry about that long title, right? Uh, Um, But we all do lots of things. (laughs) And if there's anyone that I'm, you know, I'm inspired by um, from afar and and in proximity, although our proximity at this point still has been the, the, you know, the computer screen, um, that that inspiration though is is definitely voluminous uh, when it comes to when I get chances to work with you and, and collaborate with you. So that that title fits you very well because you are doing a lot of great work and creating you know real time impact. So I'm excited to talk today all things community, entrepreneurship, volunteerism, uh, you know, youth development, education. Uh, these are the things that I know, Hadar, you, you spend many, many hours on a weekly basis, um, you know, dedicating yourself to. So um, maybe we'll start with just some more about you so that our, our millions of listeners and watchers, every time <laughs> I do my show, I say it for the law of attraction, but so that folks can get to know you um, because you are an extraordinary human being. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. So uh, really excited to be here with you and with your listeners. Um, you know, I've been um, at the University of Buffalo close to 20 years now. Um, and, you know, I'm constantly um, in awe of um, all the different experiences I've had the pleasure of engaging with and um, the students I've had an opportunity to connect with. Um, and they constantly are pushing me to be better, um, know much more, um, and be able to connect them to opportunities in our community. So um, they drive me. They're they are the reason why I'm on our campus. Um, and, you know, kind of we live vicariously through our students, but they also inspire us to give back. Um, and so that's my commitment to the community. I always think um, I ask my own children um, and my students, how are you going to contribute to the world? How are you going to solve the world's problems? Not uh, what are you going to be when you grow up? And so I have to do the the same kind of answer the same kinds of questions myself. Um, And that's why I really um, look to engage both on campus, but also in our Western New York community. Excellent. Well said. I love it. You got, you've already hit on a couple of things, you know, the the, kind of the proverbial or even literal at (laughs) times fuel source of which, you know, um, which drives you and your mission, you know, your, your life purpose. Um, and you, you already hit that. So you stole a question from, you know, I'm kidding, but you know, really it is, it, it's, it's beautiful to watch, um, you know, the, the, I guess we'll call them like the metamorphoses, if you will, of the young people or not even mm. just young people, but students, because, you know, traditional, non-traditional, whatever you want to call it, that are coming through our local universities here in Western New York. And again, all the, 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 the individuals that you work with, collaborated with, and really empowered through the programs that that Launchpad um, puts out there. And it's been really cool getting to know you over the last year, uh, as well as some of your colleagues, and then some just some co-collaborators. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so maybe, you know, more about Launchpad, you know, I, I love for our audience to get, uh, get to know not just you and your works, but then also what Launchpad really is, what it's designed, uh, why it was designed and what it's doing right now, you know, for our communities. Sure. So uh, Blackstone Launchpad, I'll give you our pitch. Blackstone Launchpad at the University of Buffalo inspires, empowers, and in- encourages our students to pursue their passions take what they're researching in the lab um, and turn it into a business, helping them really embrace entrepreneurship. Um, But what I also say is that many of our students um, are kind of interested in what is entrepreneurship and how to go inside an organization, whether it's a startup or established organization, and constantly drive for innovation and creativity uh, to support their customers. So we support both an 
entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship uh, skill set um, through an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and we're here to encourage all of our students, right, to contribute their talents however they want to um, in a space that's most important and impactful for them. Wow. Inspire, encourage, and empower, right? Those were the kind of the words that you use mm -hmm. in terms of what, what the launch pad's all about. And, you know, we, we need, we need, uh, you know, we need like 10 more of these types of organizations or a hundred more even just because of the great work that you're doing and those exact kind of foundational fundamental things that you're looking to do with, with the, the students and individuals that come through. Let's key in further on entrepreneurship because, you know, right. entrepreneurship is the, is, you know, it's a buzzword, right? Hadar. And, yep. um, and it, but it's, but it's a, it's a truly special place to be when you really truly arrive to actual entrepreneurship. So, so like using myself as a, just a quick sidebar example, I thought I was an entrepreneur in my first, you know, eight years of my career, but I really came to found that I was an entrepreneur, right? And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with, the outward, like actual full on entrepreneur, or then that within that organization that has that entrepreneurial spirit and maybe was founded by entrepreneurs, right? So maybe some more on the entrepreneurship because that's something yeah. that uh, that I think a lot of folks would be interested in hearing. So that that's awesome. Yeah, well, I think I'm an entrepreneur, right? Someone that's constantly striving to support an organization's uh, mission through innovative and creative um, ideas and resources. And so I think I think what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from local employers is that they're looking for students that have that entrepreneurial mindset, people that can um, solve problems, be creative, um, be resourceful, right? Like all the skill sets that an entrepreneur needs, but they employers are looking for individuals to have those skills within an established organization. And we know that entrepreneurs, sometimes we want to work within an established organization, kind of take all of the learnings and experience in more structure. And then eventually we might be comfortable enough to go out on our own in three, five years. Um, so I, I don't think you're one or the other. You might just start in one place and move toward the other or vice versa, right? Like as, there isn't a right spot for you. It's really where where you want and where you see yourself um, being uh, most impactful. Um, and I, th I think many of our students in terms of the entrepreneurship, it's, it's something that they've, they haven't heard the term, but they certainly have been encouraged to pursue higher education and pursue employment, uh, we're introducing kind of this new idea of you can be driving change within an organization. You don't necessarily have to wait for someone in leadership to give you permission. And I think that's what employers um, are, again, looking for, people that see opportunities that are ready to take charge to create the plan and present them to leadership. That's what an entrepreneur is. Incredible. And and let's let's continue on this path. I think this is really this is this is this is exciting stuff, really. I, I'm I'm loving this. Um, what are maybe a couple things, or maybe it's a it's a it's a myriad of, of of things, concepts, tips, insights might you have for any of our, our you know students that are listening, um, or people that maybe are considering going back to getting more education. Um, in terms of those, some of those topics, right? So, uh, or again, kind of skill, character, um, characteristics, I'm sorry. So like resourcefulness and creativity and imagination and problem solving, maybe a couple of things that from where you sit with all the people you get to interact with and collaborate with that, um, that folks listening might be able to action almost immediately um, where they could start to kind of develop maybe some more of those muscles, right? That that imagination muscle or that resourcefulness muscle, that grit muscle, any, any thoughts on how, how one might start that journey? Yeah, I think, you know, in terms of being resourceful um, and just being aware of the things that are around you, I think it goes back to kind of um, an improv years ago, I learned um, that yes and spirit, right? Like, saying yes to things that um, come in front of you and kind of embracing them and building on them with an and, like what's next. 
Mm. Um, and so that that's just been like my go-to like and, and thought. So as someone is kind of looking to explore and gain some experiences as look around you, see what opportunities um, arise. Maybe it's a, um, a startup weekend, right? That sometimes hosted in our community, a, uh, a community organization is hosting a, a listening um, for a, uh, to share a little bit about their organization, go to it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Be in conversation with people in our community, go to events um, and, and get to know kind of the opportunities and the challenges in our community. And then think to yourself, well, like, what are my gifts? How might I contribute my skills, my talent to uplifting this community? And I think by doing that, um, you're going to be exercising some of those skills that are key in that entrepreneurial mindset, that being creative and being a problem solver and being resourceful and and connecting the dots. I was just actually talking to one of our recent graduates this morning, and it was all about, she's like, I'm a connector. I'm like, that is your superpower. That's huge. You know, a lot of people discredit that, but that is huge. The people that you know. So go out there and have conversations with people that you see are creating change. Um, get to know them and and think about like how might you contribute to what they're doing in, in the community. There's so many events. Um, you know, we're all emerging from the health, uh, from the pandemic. And uh, we're gonna see so many events uh, come online. Um, There's Mm -hmm. gonna be an opportunity for each of us to, again, contribute, be part of your community. That's a huge piece. You can't just exist, right? You have to be part of it, be part of the, the solution. I just, I have like all these brain sensors going off because of how many great, takeaways, gold nuggets, nuggets of wisdom that you just dropped on our, our millions of watchers and listeners that are, are and starting even back to the genesis of your response to my inquiry, which is awareness, right? So just really like, how do we, how do we get in a place where we can be on the, on different platforms? Of course, you know, I'd go right to LinkedIn, which you're right. talking about a superpower or, or even we'll call it superstar. You're a superstar on LinkedIn. So shout out to all of our our LinkedIn lovers, our LinkedIn legends. I know I'm, I, I like to think I'm one of those as well. And, uh, you know, awareness, not only in your own life, Adar, but then have others be aware of you. And, and all it takes is that conversation. You're, you're again, another, another just, you know, simple, but beautifully powerful tip, right? Everyone, you can, ex, you can access um, almost anyone nowadays, right? Mm-hmm. You can message anyone. And, and too many, I, 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 without generalizing Hadar, I'm curious, this maybe is something you can weigh in on if you have a, a view on it. But I think a lot of times I hear things like, you know, someone's too busy or someone's too, you know, uh, too big of an executive. And so they defer on reaching out when if they just did the simple reach out, you know, you've now, you've now, you know, kind of punched your ticket for a chance for a response. But if you never throw anything out there, then you're never going to, you're never going to have that chance to potentially collide with whoever, whoever, or whatever it is that you want to connect to. Yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely um, accurate. I think we're all human, right, John? Like, and we all love to talk about what we do and our experiences and, you know, so, things that we've learned about. Um, and so I think people are willing to sit down over in-person coffee or over Zoom, you know, and and get to know one another. I think uh, LinkedIn is mm. phenomenal, right? You just need to um, put yourself out there and share what you're doing and invite people to be in conversation. Um, and when you're connecting with them, don't forget that message so important, right? Like, why am I reaching out to you? Like, what what are you doing that's really exciting and inspired me to reach out? Um, but so there are ways that you really have to push maybe out of your comfort zone. And let's say cold call in the sense of inviting people into conversation. But then we have these um, fantastic opportunities where the community has already organized this. So there's the open coffee time, right? right. There's kind of this mentor meetup. People have already volunteered to say like, hey, I'm willing to share my time with you. Just book an appointment. Um, so there's like 
I always tell my students that there's like, if you want to gain a little bit more confidence and get some little wins along the way to build up that confidence. Yeah. So um, there's some great resources, but you know, when you get down to it, when you reach out to someone and you say like, I'm interested in what you're doing, um, your story relates to my story. I'd like to learn from your experiences. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine anyone saying, you know, I don't have, I don't have 15 minutes to do that. And especially with the technology that we have now, right? Like Zoom is a beautiful platform. Right. Well, well said. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, and, and I'll even say layer it one more, uh, the 15 minute uh, mention you just made, especially in Western New York. I mean, we are, I mean, I, I see it every single day in, in real life and real time, just, just how beautiful our community really is. I mean, there's a reason we're called the city of good neighbors. So a shout out to the, to the 716, to Buffalo Love, let's go. And then I got a couple other shout outs, even in what you were saying there. So you talked about kind of like mentor deck, or maybe it's open office hours. So shout out to my guys, you know, Johnny Gorsica and Nick Baroni. I know we've got some things brewing with some of the work mm-hmm. you're going to be doing this summer at the launch pad with Helm, with, you know, even myself, with a couple other great humans um, <clears throat> and organizations. So there, and then even back to LinkedIn, you know, um, one thing that I, I think would be fun is to kind of maybe trace back. Um, just briefly, even how we've gotten connected and how what we've been able to do together in a sense, or, you know, on the same team in a way, right? The same initiatives. Um, But one of the people that came to mind was Terry Rice. I mean, Terry, I got to know him because, you know, you, he's an alum of UB. He's out in, he's out in the New York, greater New York uh, city area, but you talk about a LinkedIn legend superstar. I mean, he and I stay in touch. We engage with each other's content. I mean, um, I mean, he inspires me much like you do and a lot of other people, but it's cool because then there's just these, which I guess is the concept that I was getting to, it's the ripple effects, right? It's like mm-hmm. that conversation that you just reach out hat in hand as a human real, right? Like you said, this resonates with me. My story is this, or, you know, your story is this and mine is this. They're very similar. I love to learn from you even very briefly. Um, and so the ripple effects, just the, the, the power of, I call it the power of one. You just never know, right? Like you can reach yeah. out to that converse for that conversation. Next thing you know, you might have a new best friend in your, you know, or a mentor or whoever in your yeah. life. So, um, so I had, I had to weave in those, 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 those shout outs. Cause I, I'd be remiss. Osmosis yeah, wouldn't be living up if I didn't <laughs> shout those out. Well, so. I think Terry is a fantastic example. Yeah. I've learned so much from him and from all of his content, um, yes. you know, because he's he's truly putting himself out there. Um, he's not just creating it, but he's living um, his own content. But I, I have to pull back um, to talk a, a little bit about one of your most recent episodes, I think, with John Bordage. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I think it's really important. We're not just encouraging um, connection for the sake of connection and the number of connections that you have, but when you are meeting with people, really listening, actively listening and taking action and making those connections, even later on, it doesn't have to be on that call, right? Or in that interaction, but later on making those connections. So um, shout out to you and John Bordage. The social intelligence operative legend himself. I know he's yeah. collaborated with you and, and definitely, you know, he's been a, a driving mentor force in my life for a greater part of a decade. So uh, again, it just goes back even a couple layers further in this conversation to just community, right? It's like we have so many incredible resources in this in this area um, uh, or from, or even from this area that may not be here anymore or they were here for a bit. Like Again, like Terry. You know, mm-hmm. he's not really, he's not from here, I don't think, right? He's from the greater New York City area, is that? I he's think? actually down down the 90. He's from Rochester. So, oh, and relocated okay. to New York City um, okay. later on. But yeah, so just down the 90. <laughs> any, and, any, and that's a great takeaway too for our listeners. It's like anyone that's been in Buffalo, even if it's just for a little bit or in the, I should call again, Buffalo, Niagara, the Western New York area, they, they see really what we've got here. So um, it definitely, I think it leaves an indelible mark on people that have either been through here, been here for a bit, or obviously folks like myself that, that I've, I've been here my entire life. So uh, a lot of what I'm doing, I wouldn't be doing without the folks in this community. We're not, you know, and Hadar, that's the other concept, right? Like any business worth their salt, in my opinion, is very focused, very intentional about how they work with the community, how they interface, because Really, I, in my again, it's in my opinion, not it's not gospel, but we are the, the business that's that's you know a service product, et cetera, 
is only as strong as it's, it's the communities it resides in and serves. Mm -hmm. So if, if the communities around that business are not strong, then, then their business is likely not going to be as strong or maybe not even actualize at all on what it could be if, it, if they were doing certain things to kind of empower and uplift. And that's exactly what Launchpad does. So I, that's why I get all excited and here I'm ranting. So I'll take a, I'll take a breather. <laughs> I'll take a breather. But yeah. um, any, any comments there? I, any, I know there's a lot, a lot of shout outs, a lot of energy. Uh, yeah. Any further comments well, I, I think, you know, I have to offer um, uh, a note of gratitude to our community, uh, to yeah. the Western New York startup community and the, the business leaders, uh, because, you know, Launchpad recently celebrated five years on our campus, uh, which is, you know, like, who would have thought, right, this little startup. Um, so we're now kind of transitioning into more established organization on our campus and in our community, but we've only been able to achieve this milestone because of the community that has supported us. Um, the business leaders that have allowed us to kind of play with um, business challenges and present them to our students in the format of innovation sprints or people like you, John, that have um, contributed their time as mentors on some of our design challenges or listened to countless pitches, right, from our <laughs> students. Um, so and I. Yeah, and I, I have to give credit to, you know, a couple other guys, Jack Greco and Clark oh. Dever, who from the beginning said, Hadar, you got to open the gates, you got to let the community in, right? At first, we were so kind of afraid of, of maybe putting students in front of our alums and friends of the university too early. Uh, maybe they weren't, you know, their ideas weren't fully um, developed. Um, but they, they challenged us and said, you know, our community, um, wants to support our students wherever they are and once we did that it's been remarkable what we've been able to accomplish together and um, this is a true testament to to this piece is that this year we had one of our teams led by ryan young from apollo technologies they won um ryan and anders rosen won third place in startup grind in in the fall, right? And so the exciting piece and what resonates with me um, every day, every time I see Ryan is that he said, no one circles the wagons better than Western New York, right? And it's oh. so true. It's so true. We called, we, we emailed um, folks in the community, entrepreneurs that are, you know, busy. They're building their companies. They're um, running their companies, and and they were willing to share their time to listen to Ryan and Anders uh, pitch and give them feedback and open door. So um, our our little startup is only as strong as the community that's been supporting it. So huge thanks to, to everyone. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I love how you said note of gratitude. Of course, I'll just add on a shout out to to JG and CD. I call yeah. Jack Greco JD, uh, JG, but not Clark uh, CD. I just gave, I gave him that nickname in real time. So big shout outs to Jack and Clark though. They are fantastic. They're champions of community of entrepreneurship of innovation. Mm -hmm. So, and I love how you phrase that again. It's that note of gratitude and really gratitude is one of those foundational pieces that it, are, it, you know, it, utmost of importance to any happy, secure, actualizing life. Right. So, mm -hmm. so thanks for throwing that out there. And then I love that no one circles the wagon like Western New York. I mean, right? that's so good. That's so good. And a shout out again to you too. I mean, I can't help myself. There's just so many great things happening here with the five-year mark. I mean, that's incredible. And I mean, the, the mark that you're leaving and, you know, there's two things, right? There's impact and legacy that I think it talked about a lot. Hadar, mm -hmm. I know you've certainly hit on a lot of that in the beginning. And I think though, and from where I'm sitting on this side of the screen, impact is like, we're here still, right? Legacy is when we're gone. And so mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's focus on the impact now in real time. Even if it's just, again, it's that power of one, just that, that conversation, listening to a friend, telling them that they matter, um, you know, hearing them out if they're going through a struggle or, or plugging in somewhere that you can be helpful and add value. Um, you know, we're all in this together kind of mindset. And one more thing, just again, additive to the points you just brought out, Hadar, mm -hmm. um, my fellow, you know, New York business uh, planning competition uh, a judge who, again, I mean, countless use cases for the greatness being manifested through my workings with yourself, Adar, and then your team and the programming mm -hmm. that are out there. Shout out to Naja Bolden. He was um, my most recent podcast 
episode. He sat on the the judging uh, panel with me with a couple other rock star individuals. And again, it's just beautiful with that awareness and that reach out and have that conversation. Now he and I have become great friends uh, in a short period of time. And um, he's someone who's reintroduced me to Ubuntu, U-B-U-N-T-U. Um, Zulu, Zimbabwean concept in, in, in Africa, South Africa, one of the great use cases of I am because we are. That's what mm. Ubuntu translates to. So just, mm. just again, layering the additiveness, if that's a word, Hadar, to this whole community discussion, because we are only as good as, so on this conversation, there's a pie and I'm ranting, but I'll finish here. Right. There's a pie of 100%, right? And that's our maximum potential of like happiness, you know, security, whatever it may be. And if I'm at, if I'm at, you know, 75 and you're at a hundred, well, well, what do we got to do to get to that, to get the full hundred pie? And that's where, again, that community mindset comes into play. So um, I love it. I'm excited that, uh, that, you know, that you're the stuff core. I already knew that, but you're, you're this, of the same mind. Yeah. So. Well, uh, completely there. I, I think what I've seen over the years with students is that uh, when you demonstrate to them that you believe in them, when you invest your time, your energy, whatever resources that you have in them, uh, sky's the limit, you will see them soar. Uh, and I think that's what Launchpad has been able to offer to our students. Like there's nothing um, magical. It's, it's the people that are part of the organization. Um, it's the students, it's the community, and they invest in one another. It's a constant, um, give back um, within and that investment, once you invest in a student, uh, again, you will see them soar and they will pull others forward with them and share their experience. Um, again, that's what keeps me going. Let's go. Keep going. My favorite hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> you probably see that enough on LinkedIn there, Adara. Right. Um, but it's true. I mean, just whatever it takes to keep us going. Um, and it's so great that you know, and that's why, you know, again, you certainly are a person of substance and, and community and, and impact. And so when you have that, that source close to heart and you know why you do what you do, you'll keep going through the good and the bad. So another takeaway for our listeners and watchers. It's um, something I, I really think about a lot. So big time kudos, quick pivot over to Western New York Fellowship, uh, Western New York Prosper Prosperity Fellowship Program. If I'm saying that right, I don't know why I can't keep my words straight, but um, let's talk more about that. So what does that look like for our, uh, our Western New York community, for those that might be interested in um, you know, getting involved with that? Absolutely. So it's a pleasure um, and a such an honor to direct the program at the University of Buffalo. So it is a generous uh, gift from the Prentice Family Foundation that established the Western New York Prosperity Fellowship at the University of Buffalo, but also at Canisius College. And so over the years, you know, a, a private Jesuit institution and a public um, state institution have collaborated on um, a fellowship, which is really uh, remarkable. Um, and it's such a joy. So we have an opportunity to invest in students. Uh, typically, at the University of Buffalo, we support um, about 20 to 25 students on an annual basis that show poise um, to be leaders in our community. I always introduce them as the future leaders of Western New York um, in a variety of disciplines. They can come from business, from engineering, from pharmacy. Um, the piece that brings them all together is that they want to contribute their gifts to revitalizing and sustaining economic development in our community. And the community isn't just Buffalo and Erie County, it's the eight counties that make up Western New York. And so it's my responsibility, it's the responsibility of the director at Canisius College, uh, Robin Brower, to help our students um, understand the opportunities, the challenges in the region, help them articulate and understand how they can contribute um, and help them become sticky in Western New York, right? We want to make sure that they get to know people, they gain that um, affection, that affinity to Western New York, right? Whether it's the Buffalo Bills that keep them here, or um, we have a, an amazing partnership with an organization called Explore Buffalo. Um, you might have heard of them. They're a, yeah. a touring group, right, um, that helps you 
explore the rich history of our neighborhoods, our architecture, the culture in our region. And so we encourage our fellows and we create experiences for the fellows in Western New York. They might come from Metro New York. They might come from Maine um, across the nation to Western New York to pursue their higher education. It's our responsibility to ignite the spark to stay here in the region and contribute to revitalizing the community. So well said. That's just, and that's just another fantastic, just additive piece to the whole puzzle here that, you know, that your, your life um, is dedicated to. And I, I know several, several of your, your fellows, uh, one that comes fresh to mind is Avi Afek, um, oh, of Startwell. Yeah. I mean, Avi's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, I remember on the phone with him and like I was talking to him and I, I remember just saying like, you know, how, how, like, how old are you again? Like, he's like, I'm 26 or 27. And um, it was just, and really not that age matters. There's a phrase that I live in, I truly live by. It's if you're good enough, you're old enough kind of thing. Right. And that's what we're seeing. I think, I think we're seeing that's, that's Trevor Moat. So I don't want to make sure I steal his words. He's a, a famous brain trainer, mental conditioning coach, someone I look up to, but if you're good enough, you're old enough. And that's, um, you know, that's definitely a huge piece. And actually while we're here, uh, this is like mm. real time stuff. I got to make sure I plug my laptop in. <laughs> I didn't realize I didn't have it plugged in. I'm actually just going to pause this really quickly and it, it won't Great. affect anything, but one sec, I'm sorry, Hadar. And to all of our listeners, one second. And we are back. Um, thanks, Adar, for that. Make sure that, you know, we're still talking about technology here. Well, well, batteries only last for so long. I didn't realize in my Oz cave down here that I didn't have plugged in. So, but yeah, so Avi and back to the, the, the program. I mean, just, just truly fantastic. Um, the works you're doing to then again, the ripple effects, you know, that, you know, working with these, these, these up, you know, up and comers um, mm -hmm. to help them then create real time impact. Um, it just keeps adding those layers or say it's a tree, right? The rings of a tree um, right. as it grows and, and continues to expand uh, or it'll grow. So yeah. big time kudos like, there. Thank you. Well, uh, kudos really go to Avi um, and all of our fellows that take advantage, right? Like I always say that yes and spirit, we talked about it earlier. Yes. Avi um, was selected as a fellow this past year and he just, said yes and and took advantage of every opportunity asked questions really invested himself as much as we invested in him through the mm -hmm. fellowship program and has paying off he's now been picked up uh, by launch new york right um, he's just doing amazing amazing work and so that's what we look for in um, prosperity fellows that curiosity that spark mm -hmm. that willingness to go that extra step um, and really embrace all of the experiences afforded to them. So yeah, we'll see what, what Avi is able to create, but in just one year, I was just like, wow, it, how fast. Um, and he still finished his, his uh, master's program, right? That's the important part as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I asked him when, when do you sleep and uh, you know, he, he finds his time, but uh, doing a lot like yourself and like so many others that have already been listed here. I think I'd, I'd be remiss to not kind of just circle this all back and then we'll finish kind of with like, you know, things like where to find, you know, for where to find you and, and these, these programs that you're directing. Um, but before that, even I wanted to just circle back to, you know, for me, the two big use cases that I have in interacting with you and the team Hadar would be last year's um, student to biz competition, mm. which which got me in touch with a lot of incredible students, young people, and not to categorize as young or old, but just just youthful, spirited entrepreneurs. Um, one of them being Chad Williams, mm. uh, who who we were supposed to shoot a podcast last week, but just because of scheduling, we're going to be shooting uh, at another point in time. But he's We've remained friends. We've grown our friendship, mentorship, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've learned from him and I, I, I hope he's learned from me. And uh, just and, and so shout out to Chad and to, to the works he's doing in, in social justice uh, streetwear, you know, with due process. So got to plug that in there near and dear to my heart. Um, and, and so thanks again for affording me the chance to be a judge and be able to interact. And then obviously, of course, the same, the yes and mentality, right. that's something I live with as well. I actually have a, a, a regurgitated quote that I, I love to, to throw out there as much as I can from coach Greg Paulus. My alma mater, Niagara University's Division One men's uh, basketball head, head coach, 
so what now what you know mm. it's one i live by i just talked about this weekend in our pga reach marathon um you know we were talking after the fact and people were like well what's next kind of thing like is this it you know for for what we were doing a whole separate actually i can i'm doing too many shout outs here but a shout out to these guys my pga reach family um the point is so what now what you, you know real life example, you know, hundred thousand dollar or whatever hypothetical, but you hundred thousand dollar contract. So what now what you, you know, you might have to file bankruptcy. So what now what, you know, the way that coach Greg Paulus Hadar, the way that he coined it was, you know, we drain a three, we're up by 15. So what now what our star player gets technically filed out. So what now what? So the same spirit as the yes. And in a sense, mm-hmm. just differently said, so mm-hmm. maybe something else that listeners could like, but then one more shout out would be over to this most recent year with, um, you know, working with Bailey, uh, Bailey Burke there. Uh, and then Alex as well from the NYBPC, uh, which I know um, there was a lot of uh, co-collaboration with the launch pad with yourself. And I got to meet some, just some fantastic, fantastic, you know, entrepreneurs and then even the judges uh, being able to connect with them. So too yeah. many, too many to count the great use cases that are being afforded. So thank you and, yeah. and the crew. My pleasure. And I think, you know, the New York State uh, Business Plan Competition is such an amazing opportunity for our students. And um, while we and I work at the University of Buffalo, it is more of a community. Um, we need to support all of the students in the 21 colleges and universities that are in Western New York. And so the New York State Business Plan Competition really encourages our region to come together and to support our students, regardless of, you know, institutional boundaries, um, come together and provide our students with that opportunity. So it's a pleasure. Um, There's always, you know, sparks and experiences that come of it. And so I'm glad that you had a positive experience. I want to just say, you know, you mentioned um, with Chad, you mentored him and you are now friends. That is oftentimes what I find, you know, we start a relationship more as uh, as mentors of, of these students, uh, but really they turn out to be our mentors in the end and our friends. Um, and that's that's uh, a beautiful um, piece that comes away from all of, all of this in, in the end. Yeah, exactly. Symbiotic relationship that, uh, you know, I, I get, I get a lot of greatness and uh, and, and, you know, learnings from Chad and vice versa. So mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's a, it's a win-win, uh, even though that's a bit cliche or overused as well, but it's, it's true. So, um, so, all right, well, this has been great. And so kind of in summary, you know, we've talked so many different things here. Uh, I know we briefly traced, you know, Hadar, your background, what you're doing. Uh, and then we really did a, a beautiful job highlighting, or you did a beautiful job highlighting Hadar on the launch pad, um, you know, in, in tandem with, you know, Techstars UB, and then obviously the the, pro, the fellowship program as well. Um, and then just a lot of gold nuggets there from you, Hadar, on things to do to kind of raise your platform, get more involved, how to, how mm-hmm. to find that entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial spirit, um, you know, and how to leverage platforms to kind of, um, you know, amplify your voice and, and your, your life goals. So, Big time. Thanks. Where do we find, you know, I actually was going to say I was, I, I've been ending with what keeps you going, but because we've talked about it so much, I'll, I'll divert from that or, or circumvent it because we've already hit on that, which again, it yep. goes back to students. So more kudos. Um, but where can we find, um, where can we find and where, where can our listeners and watchers maybe plug in, add value, get involved, um, things that you're looking to accomplish? How can we, how can we plug in? And I will have this all in the show notes. So feel free to divulge as much as you'd like. Sure, sure. Well, thanks, John. And, um, you know, everyone can really find me on LinkedIn, right? So um, I think I'm, there are just a few Hadar Bordens out there. Um, <laughs> and, at the univers- and at the University of Buffalo, I guarantee I'm the only Hadar on campus. So pretty easy to find me. Um, I have a Calendly link uh, that I'll share with you, John. Folks um, can reach out and book some time. Um, happy to chat, happy to share whatever connections that I help have to support um, folks in our community and anyone that wants to contribute to our students as a mentor, an expert in residence, um, as a judge, leading a workshop, um, offering a talk. We're always um, happy to have you participate because um, the, the launch pad is only as strong as the community um, that we support. So uh, we'd love to have you be a part of it. 
That's right. And take it from me. Uh, I've already outlined a bunch of it, but uh, it is so worth uh, the time, the effort, um, and really the energy that you'll find from interacting with Hadar, the team, and these programs, these events. Um, so cannot stress that enough. We'll have it all in the show notes. So you'll just have to click those beautiful little hyperlinks and then you'll get right in the right to the right place there to, to make connections and um, and to have a chance to speak with someone as, as awesome as Hadar. So highly recommend that. Um, but with that said, Hadar, this has been a lot of fun. This is this is uh, this is great. And I'm glad that we put this in the calendars several months ago now. It feels like it was yesterday. I know. Uh, yeah, this has been a joy. So thanks so much for, for sharing your time and allowing me to, to share our story. I'm excited to, this is going to be a quick turnaround, even though the audience <laughs> know this, this was literally done on a Tuesday and this is going to go out tomorrow. So Wednesday, uh, June 2nd, I usually don't date the, the, you know, the episode, but we are. And so the gratitude to you and to all the works and all the different people, all the different organizations in our conversation. And then of course, to the video creative network, my podcast support, uh, my great friends there here in the uh, West New York area. So Shout out to Vidwheel and again to, to yourself, Adar, and all the programming and the works that you're doing. But until next time, thanks everyone for watching, listening. Give it a share, a like, comment, anything if you found this valuable and resonant. So thanks again, Adar, for being here. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks.